Hi, I'm John Johnson. and I'm going to demonstrate proper tire changing procedures, including the use of jacks, tools, safe vehicle placement, tire identification, and ways to make the task easier and avoid the pitfalls that can spell disaster. The production of this video is intended to provide visual references to written instructions found in the department's manual of operations, vehicle's owner manuals, and factory decals placed on most vehicles. Now, this video is not intended to supersede or replace vehicle factory instructions. If there's any doubt, contact the appropriate vehicle dealership or your area mechanic or the fire shops. Because the fire department is so large and our equipment is so diverse, we carry over 30 different types of tires. If you need to order a tire, you have to know the exact tire size, the style of rim, and the type of vehicle that goes on. Here is an example of the series of numbers and letters that identify the size and type of this tire. The first set of numbers describes the tire height. The second set of numbers describes the width of the tire. The letter R means it's a radial ply bolted tire and the third number is the size of the rim. You may see a letter in front like P for passenger tire or LT for light truck. Here's some helpful information that I want to tell you about. The difference between a recap and a brand new tire. Now the recap, if you look, might have this slightly rounded edge at the tread. Along here you can see where they've cut the old worn tread off and placed this new cap under a special process. Never put a recap on a front or steering axle. This is one reason why knowing the rim style is critical. These two rims may look similar, but they cannot be interchanged. The one on the left is a hub piloted rim. The holes for the studs are smaller in comparison to the other rim. Notice the lug nut has a washer attached to it. The rim on the right is stud piloted. The holes for the studs are larger and are chamfered or cut in at an angle. Notice the lug nut is bevel cut to fit into the rim. Here you see the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure for the maximum load capacity of this tire. Most of our firefighting vehicles are near their weight limit with tools, equipment, and personnel. Therefore, the tires are to be filled to the pressure listed on the tire. Tires will lose pressure over time. In fact, tire manufacturers can allow up to a 5% loss in pressure per month and it will still be considered a good tire. For example, a tire with 40 psi at 5% loss is 2 pounds per month. Not much, but unchecked over 6 months will result in a loss of 12 pounds. This is why it is important to check your tire pressure with a gauge on a regular basis. A low tire creates more heat, causing premature wear and a breakdown in the tire integrity, not to mention the loss in driving stability. As little as 10 pounds less in one tire can cause your vehicle to drift to one side while driving. Here's a little bit of information. If you see an indentation running across the sidewall like this, that's normal. But if you see a bulge or something where it sticks out, that's not good. You should have this tire checked. Something as simple as turning into a driveway too soon and striking the sidewall will affect the integrity of your tire. When selecting one tire to be replaced, Choose the tread pattern that closely matches the tire on the opposite side. This combination is incorrect. This combination is correct. These two tires are the same size. One is worn down to within its limits, the other is new. When replacing a tire on a dual wheel application, tire height is critical. The two tires must be as close to the same height as possible. For example, you would not want to put these two tires together. If load equalization is not met, the taller tire will be bearing more than its weight designed capacity. This could have catastrophic results.
Department of Transportation tread limit specifications for replacing a worn tire on a commercial or heavy vehicle is 4 32nds of an inch for the front or steering tires and 2 32nds of an inch for the drive or rear tires. The LA County expectations for safety are to replace the tire before it reaches that limit. There is a built-in limit check in most tires. It is between the treads. If anywhere you see the limit bar flush with adjoining treads, that tire must not be driven on. Replace it as soon as possible. Another way to check tread depth for the drive tire is to place a penny head down into the most worn part of the tire's tread. From the edge of the penny to the top of Lincoln's head is 2 32ths of an inch. Notice, you can't see the top of Lincoln's head. This tire was taken out of service at the right time before it reached the wear limits. To check front or steering tires, use the back of the penny. The distance from the edge of the penny to the top of the word UNUM is 4 32nds of an inch. If this were a steering tire, it would be well beyond the safe limits.